Hello, good evening and welcome. You are watching the Now Debate with Jared Walters. I'm here with my partner in crime as usual, Mr. Richard Oliver. And tonight's show we have a uh, uh, privilege of welcoming Matt Mullins from Ghostnet Paranormal. Uh, Matt is from one of the premier uh, ghost hunting teams of um, uh, the state of Illinois. Matt, how are you doing? Richard, how are you doing? Yeah, good. I'm doing all right. And uh, basically, Matt, thank you for coming on the show, my friend. Um, I just wanted to sort of, uh, today we're going to be talking, we've, we've had a couple of chats before um, the show went air now. So uh, just want to get a little bit of background about yourself and sort of what, what, you, what you've been involved in with regards to sort of paranormal investigating and that sort of thing. And uh, as to what sort of calls you're getting from helping people and that sort of stuff at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we normally investigate and help other people. Um, we do it free. I don't know any paranormal team that charges money to come in. I find that unfair. Um, but we, uh, the calls that come in normally are uh, currently seems like demonic cases, but we don't know yet. Um, but we're going to do everything in our power to hopefully help the family. Um, we do have a medium that we talk to as well, um, but she won't be able to come up on a few of those, so we're going to do it ourselves. Uh, we know everything about reeking and saging and everything like that, just making everything safe. Um, but yeah. So how did you get into the paranormal, my friend? What sort of experiences have set you off on this journey? You know, I've been interested in the paranormal for a long time. Um, when I was, what, 10, 11, I uh, remember when the show came on. Uh, I think it was on Discovery Channel or Travel Channel or something. It was, uh, it was based out of England. Um, and I can't think of can't think of the show though. It popped him head and popped it right back out. Most uh, haunted. Most haunted. Thank <laughs> <you. Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> that let alone sparked my interest. Like, okay, this this might be real. And you know, growing up and stuff like that, I dabbled into like you know getting a night vision camera and going out to cemeteries and stuff like that or even just having personal experiences and then uh, getting a little bit older I decided to uh, just do this I didn't have a team or nothing I did have a friend of mine who we used to do a lot of that stuff with and um, I mean the very first kind of evidence we ever got was we were at a cemetery uh, didn't know any history about it just like just investigating pretty much and we had a black apparition come up from a tombstone and then just disappear like it, it hopped and just went away we literally caught it on camera and that just blew our minds um, I've had personal experience happen to me in my old home um, as well so 2009 or 2019 we decided um, we, we should like start doing this and we were investigating stuff not under ghost net name but then we just started getting people in uh, some of our good friends that had had experiences and now we're just I mean can I say we have the most experience like everybody else, like you see on TV and stuff like that? Nobody really has the experience in it. You just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's you, – you have a good idea of what to do. It, it's not rocket science to help somebody, but I feel this is we're, – we're part of the many that do help, like doctors and stuff like that. I mean – Nobody really thinks about paranormal problems as an issue. It really yeah. is. 
Do you know? I've got to be honest. Yeah, sorry, sorry guys, right there. No, go on. They were quite, um, they were quite wise words. They were, man. To be honest with you. Yeah, man. I. Yeah. I, that, were, that's the point uh, I was going to make. <laughs> yeah, they were quite. Um, that's ex- that's exactly where we started and we've been with it uh, about helping and being sort of like an emergency service for the paranormal. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I get. Yeah, I like what you're saying, but my friend, I gotta be honest. You hit the nail right on the head, then. I gotta say, from someone, you 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 warmed my heart there, my friend, and the fact you said you did it for free, like one of the reasons, yes, like yes. myself and Richard are close friends, is because I actually went through that process of having very strange experiences happen to me, and I was a medium at the time. I was working as a medium at the time, so I had an idea of some of it, but what the experiences that happened to me were completely and utterly out of my comfort zone. Uh, they happened to others around me as well, but if it wasn't for Richard literally extending his hand and saying, "Right, I'll 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 help you through it," and sort of spending that time with me, talking me through, you know, even when he had to research stuff himself, and that's the thing. Half the time, you don't get the answers. You've literally got to go back and go, "Right, okay, <laughs> I need to find these answers out now," you know, and uh, you live it through the seat of your pants. But you know, honestly, um. There is a need for it, and and I think as this world is sort of moving into more tense and interesting times, then as the Chinese proverb would say, would, would, would say um, you know, it, it's happening more and more to people now where they are having these different experiences, and, you know, people feel like they go nuts. They feel like they're going nuts with it, and they don't understand it, and, yeah, there definitely needs to be more and more people out there that, that that are actually answering this call. Would you agree? Yeah, I do agree. Absolutely. 100%. So, you've got like a, an interesting sort of array of equipment behind you and you showed us something before we came on the, on the show. Is it... it um, I, I, I'm busting to know more about that little piece of equipment that you showed us earlier before we went on air. So, I, so yeah. I've got to ask you about that. Yeah, absolutely. I have to give credit to uh, our team member and tech guy, uh, Alan Dodd, for creating this little guy right here. Um, He is an amazing creator of anything. Anything he has in his head, he's like, you know what, I think I can make this for scientific paranormal use. And... uh, you know, yeah, REM pods and all that we've used on our videos, but this is a uh, proc sensor, basically. And what it does, I mean, you don't mind if I turn it on and kind of show how it No, works. go nuts, man. Go nuts. No, you got you, 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 you do what you feel well, right. To... Yeah, I don't even need to put the antenna. So, might go off a little bit. All right. All right. So, here. Like, you see, I'm barely even touching it. Not even coming up next to it. But you see, it's just one single light. And it, the main purpose of that, because with REM pods, it determines from the lights, like red, green, blue, yellow. Um, I can't. If I'm correct, I think the, the red light means they're super close. The yellow means they're, they're coming up to it. But with this device, which he named the MS Rem. Um, If the spirit, literally, we put it in an area normally that we know the spirit is, has the, uh, the foot traffic that it, it always goes. We put it there. So if that goes off, we know that it's right there, right next to it. Um, it, it, it's it's quite hard to use so um, if you're an investigator and you had one of these on hand and all you know is REM pods you're going to be like why is this thing not going on mm. it's not that simple it works it's been tested they have to be up to it that's how we know we have the spirit's attention when this thing goes off and we're conducting an experiment we know that it's it's right there in front of us because this thing's facing us 
that's how it is. Mm. Energy, whatever, that will go off. Is that what you're using? In, is a video you shared with us with where you're in a bedroom? Is that what you're using in in, in that in that video? No, that that was a uh, true uh, REM pod. So that's just like your normal sort of. Uh, it's a proper one. That's your normal sort of REM pod, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Plain day. Well, um, the, the idea of this this show, what we talked about last night, because you've you said that you you were basically now on one of the the premier sort of paranormal sites for people who need help with the paranormal in your in your you're in the state of Illinois, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we have a lot of people in Illinois that do paranormal research and stuff like that, but with us, uh, believe it or not, when we were talking about like paying for money and stuff we started out just wanting to do like youtube exploring abandoned places and document for paranormal but it became more than that yeah and we became this character in the field of the paranormal here in illinois and you know I, it's just it's unbelievable to be honest so what what sort of go on, go on rich no, I was just thinking. Um, so you said you've been doing this about three years. You said, Matt, one well, eh? about three years. Your team. Yeah, for Ghostnet, three years. And how long have you been doing house investigations? Would you say then, the same amount of time, or? Yeah, about the same amount of time when we first started this and stuff like that. Yeah, about yeah, about three years. Uh, what what's the what would you say is like the worst experience you've had so far paranormally? The one that's give you, you know, that that dread, that thinking this is this is this can be really serious. You know, um uh, currently like the houses we've been investigating, we're just plain Dane uh just haunts. You know, they they all know we were there, they knew the family was live there and everything but I would right now there hasn't been really anything that has told us like you know this this is not good um I'm kind of afraid I might get an attachment kind of thing you know but that is coming up that's the thing um a case that we're currently working on right now here in our town um with the little boy that's becoming a little serious and we did do an emergency i got off at off work and my wife was like we need to go she's messaging us on the facebook page we need to go and just bring a little equipment just try to get some answers right then before we do it our official investigation this saturday and we went there my wife got scratched and a few minutes after that i was in the same spot conducting an EVP session and my neck got scratched so it's we've never had that kind of issue investigating homes yes we've had issues like that investigating haunted abandoned locations like asylums and stuff like that fun for the team you know to get more of an idea um, that's like a little side thing we love to do but we've never had experiences like that in a home and now I'm it, it's making me wonder, like, are they safe? Because she did recently send a message showing her back. She's getting bruises now, and her son's getting the same exact marks as she's getting now. So it's it's starting to get unknown, to be honest. It, it's, it's hard to figure this out, and we have to be safe in it. <clears throat> well... I can give you a bit of advice, and I kind of believe this. And spirit will place you in a path of someone that really needs help, Matt, right? And they see you differently to what you will see yourself. I know this is new, but they see the place you're coming from and what you've just explained to us in just the brief minutes of this video is you're coming from the right place. Yeah, absolutely, and you, man. And, and, and when you're coming from the right place... You are protected. Spirit will make sure that you're safe, right? They'll make doubly sure. 
the jaw safe, right? And if they if they are sort of like making people contact, you will really need help because spirit do that on the other side more than we'll know, right? They have led us on paths where we have connected with people and the, the, the circumstances and the coincidences, if you like the word, have, have led us to that person and spirit have manipulated it, right? So take that as, as a good thing, that if you're, if you're in, the, in the position of helping these people, spirit are there with you, right? They've, they've had a hand in that. Right, I'm a firm believer in that because that's happened to us a few times. Oh. <laughs> Take that as like that. That's a shield, right? That's that's part of your shield. Um, you, when it comes to things like stuff like this, you will encounter things where you will feel like you're out of your depth, right? You will, Matt. You will feel like why you know I, I, this is above my pay grade, if you like. I know you know in that sense. And just you, somehow the answers will come. It's happened to us on so many occasions. We've gone into a case and, and it's always brand new. Like I said earlier in the beginning, I've been doing this over 15 years and I'm still learning. And I still do a case and I learn something new. And I learn something new about myself. I learn something new about the paranormal and in the technique of dealing with it. So if you, if you do the protection, you say the prayers, and whatever you believe in, it doesn't matter what, what you believe in, as long as you believe in it and, and you focus on love. And you can ask the angels to guide you, protect you, keep you safe before you go into the investigation. And they'll put all the proper steps in place to keep you safe, Matt. And they will, if as long as you just, you know, sometimes we've done cases, me and Jazz, and we've forgotten. We've forgotten to do a protection prayer. And we, they, you, you'll have... Um, you have sort of a bit of a bollocking off spirit for forgetting that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> They're letting up in their own way yeah. that you've done, you've done, yeah. you've made a mistake. So I would be, if you, I know these cases, you are, I can feel it. You're going to do cases and you're going to be thinking, oh my Lord, this is big. But trust in the fact that you're there and you're there to help. Yeah. I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. From, I, I won't bring. <laughs> What from from what you've spoken to me about in this conversation today, and what you've spoken to me about yesterday, my friend, I think you're very near, and what like I can see light around you. Um, I can see a lot of light and a lot of protection around you personally. Um, I feel in in the situation that you are in. Um, is this the same case you said about the the, the, the you asked about the um. There, there, there was there was a case affecting a younger person around you that you mentioned earlier. I'm not sure if you mentioned it in this interview or if it was before we went on air, but is that the same case that you're dealing with now, or is that a different case? Uh, yeah, younger family. Um, right. Yeah, that's that. That would be the same case. Right. What I would say is, um, look out for who is sensitive in the family right uh who is possibly the focal point um I, I also have a look into the history of what is happening um around people okay because sometimes there are certain beliefs that the family can have that can that can cause act activity to exacerbate and if you it, sometimes you've got to come at it with two two ways is you've got to help the family to understand what's happening to them and empower them it's like, for example, one of the things Richard did for me when I was going through this is he said, have you got a camera? Now, for a blind person, but I was born with a camera in my hand, I've been fascinated with video cameras since I could get my hands on one, right? Uh, I don't know why, it's just the way I've always been. Um, and he said, by documenting something, he said uh, he got me to document everything that was happening to me. Whether it was me sitting down and creating a diary of what was happening, or whether it was filming activity when it happened, or just after it happened, he said that does two reasons. That does two things. A, it gives the investigator something to look at and analyze that happens when you're when when you're not there, because when you are there, whatever's hurting the family, right? Whether it is something like an attachment 
or whether it is something like a loved one or whether it's something that they're creating themselves because that can happen as well right which wh whatever it is because there will be different things that you come around they it gives you an insight into what's happening when you're not there but most importantly what you're also doing is you're empowering the family you're changing their mindset because their mindset is um rather being one of fear of something that's happening and they can't control they are doing something about it and that can that can change the balance of things a little bit can alter the balance of power a little bit within that environment and give you enough sort of room to maneuver and find out what's sort of going on would you agree with that rich yeah this you learn as you go along matt there's so many aspects i mean like children under five mostly sea spirit after five if if it, if they get to five and it, it and it dissipates in it's normally gone if they go past five and it stays it usually stays forever so you learn there's so many things that you will just it's just best to learn it you know there's no guidebook there's no rule book it's just you sort of learn on the job but there's little things like jazzy just explained there we go through a process and we look at this aspect and we look at that aspect and we look at where they've been have they been anywhere you know extremely paranormal have they done this have they done that and you'll just you build it up and you'll it'll just become you know it just become second nature i think matt there's so much to take in we could we could we could talk for three hours on you and we'd only cover a quarter of it you know yeah. it, it's there's so much to this field that is you don't see when you look at youtube or you look at facebook you'll never see you know, the you see you see people on Facebook and they're summoning demons live on Facebook, and you just think, oh, you know, you must. You must, I look at them and think you are so clueless as to what how dangerous that is, not just for yourself mm -hmm. but for the people watching, because exactly. like we, like like we talked about earlier, negative things, right? They use psychology. Right, they genuinely use psychology, and they can manipulate your mood, your sleep pattern, how you feel when you look in the mirror. They'll affect your social circle. They can affect so much of your daily life. And unless you know about it, you wouldn't have a clue. Unless you know about the paranormal, and you know you, you can, you know, you can feel your own energies, and you can. You know, you're a bit aware or a bit sensitive, or a bit. You you, you won't have a clue what's happening. You just think it's just normal day to day stress, or you know. To caveat but, that a little bit for your situation, though, Matt. So, sorry, Rich, to cut you off. Just it feels like it's an important point to make. Your desire to do good and to help people, that does help create a bit of a buffer from that, doesn't it, Rich? Yeah, it does. When you do anything through love. Um, I done, you know, um, I done a case a couple of years back. It took me seven years, Matt. This case, seven years. I was going back and forth, dealing with different aspects of what this person was going through, and it was layers and layers and layers. And in the end, I made a mistake. I took an object that was used for dark means, and I destroyed it. And the only fact that saved me was because I did it through love. I did it because I wanted to save this person and I want this person to have a better life. And that was the only saving grace that stopped me from having a real bad time. You know, because of the means I did it, because of the, I had that mindset, even though I made a mistake, I should have researched the object, looked at it, seen what was done and, and undid it. I didn't, I just wanted rid of it because of the way it was making me feel. Um, and it's, you know, it's that little thing that little fact that you all want to help people and you want to show people the paranormal is a big deal in the spirit world. They that's the that's the people they're looking for. Absolutely, man. So, um, are you feeling that like that there's a bit of a rise in the paranormal with everything going on at the moment uh, around near you, um, Matt? You know, uh, it's a possibility. I can't say yes or no on it because 
even with anything going on in the world, even if this wasn't what it is now, it could still be hectic. Um, but I feel like maybe there is a little bit of a rise. It's like when you bring a thunderstorm in and that energy amps up wherever you're at. Um, it's similar to that. Yeah, definitely. It could be. Yeah. I, yeah, you can imagine that's the case, yeah. So, um, should we have a look at some of your clips? Yeah, absolutely. Right, I'm going to play the first clip. This is a uh, this is a clip basically about... Um, it, it, it's basically... Um, it's the one with the K2 meter, or the EMF meter, that, that goes off. Uh, it's the one filmed in Portrait. So uh, you know the you know, you know the clip I'm on about, do you? Do you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you want me to tell you beforehand where this was? Well, let's, should we see the clip first, and then we'll get a bit of explanation about it afterwards? Then, how does that sound? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, before we do that, very quickly, I just want to say hi to everyone on the chat. We've got um, uh, Sam. I think it's Sam, uh, Bama. Or Sam, Obama, sorry, I, I've, uh, Adrian, hello to Adrian, hello to Nina, um, hello to uh, Saving Sin City EVP and ITC, hello to all you guys on the chat, and thank you very much for for contributing. If you've got any questions for Matt, um, during the course of this broadcast, please let us know, and uh, we'll be, we'll 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 put them to him later on if that's okay with you, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to have a look at this uh, this footage for, for uh, now. This is the first clip. So go into it now. Come on, sit right next to me again. Make that go up. Are you Frederick? If so, make this EMF go up. Frederick Holman. Make, make this EMF go up. Holy sh... Do that again. Come on. Okay. Just make sure... All right, so what's your... Uh, if you want to give us a bit of background on that, then, my friend, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this video right here was uh, this was recorded in the Paxton, Illinois County Jailhouse, where a inmate known as Frederick Holman, um, he was a serial killer, uh, normally targeted women, and uh, he was imprisoned at that jail and. They built his gallows right there outside of a gym. So he, believe it or not, told uh, the people that were building it how to build it and how he wanted it to be if it was his last time on Earth. He, this is how he wanted it to look. So we were like, uh, we're going to try to contact him, right? We were in his cell and uh, just demanded him to come up. Come sit with us. And it, if you could look closely on that, if you, if you could see it on the video, it was, it was completely at zero. Mm. And when I said his full name and I told him to come up and make this go red, he did just that. I'm not saying it's anybody else in that spirit-wise. That was, that was legit. We believe him because we, we said his name. Uh, that was the first time we tried to contact him. Um, we don't have a video of this one, but the second time we went there on a second investigation, we had a lady who was his great, great granddaughter and gave us some information. And I said that information, which why did you abandon your son? Um, and immediately after that, I was sitting with Alan, who is our tech guy. and He was doing a spirit box session. I immediately was up against the wall and I got grabbed like, full arm or hand on my arm gripping it and I just broke away completely white 
ran out of the cell. I mean, I don't normally run out of things, but it was... I, I knew he did not like that, what I was asking him. So did you so, did you get any other contact with him or did you get anything through the spirit box from him? Um, through the spirit box, no. But that day, yes, we we were getting a lot of uh, voices coming through. Uh, we did get a like young child or I don't know a delinquent child because there was a holding cell for kids that were like 12, 13, 14 at that time to go in and just be held for a while till getting talked to, I guess. Um, A kid came through and said he's stuck. And we were like, are you you stuck in your own realm? And he came through and he said, yes, stuck. And it it was just constant. We were just talking to him. And that was actually Alan and my wife that was contacting him, uh, this kid. And uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, every time we go there, we always try to communicate with Frederick because we have one answer to ask him if he would talk to us, and that's, why did you commit these crimes? Yeah. No, even though he got hung and all that, we just feel like his case is still not at rest. So do you do you so what 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 happens when you ask a spirit for help then do you bring the medium in then or do you guys like sort of help them cross over or have you used the the, the spirit box with that or what what happens when you you get a spirit that asks asks for help No well we don't we don't bring it in cuz a lot of times when we uh Hello Hang on. I think we lost. I think we lost him, Andrew. I think we've lost him. Uh, hopefully, we can get him back. Uh, bear with me, bear, bear a second, guys. Uh, I don't know how to do this then. Uh, Rich, you still, you're still with me, yeah? Yeah, I'm still here. Let's see if I can get him back on the call. Ah, there you go. Hello. I am sorry about that. Not a problem, man. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's Skype. It's Skype. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not a loud bit without a technological mess up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. <laughs> At least this time wasn't my fault because it normally is. <laughs> That was. I believe that was on my end. It's alright, man. It's just not no, a problem, man. It's alright, man. man. It's all you right. know, you guys can edit that part out. We can skip that part. <laughs> <laughs> we I are live. You were talking to me about, yeah. You were talking to me about the, uh, if we brought a medium to help anybody that needs help, like in the spirit world. No, we do not, because a lot of places that ask for that, unless it's a home, then yes, we will. But we're at a public place. This is a jailhouse that they do have tours and stuff like that. But... Um, in that case, we, we do not because they're, they're here. Um, and I know, I know when, when you hear those words, I'm stuck and you help me. It, it's hard. It's, it is hard to not help that spirit in that situation, but we don't want to do anything to upset the owners of the facility. Because we've had places that we've went before do an investigation for everybody live on Facebook that before the investigation started, they said, please don't tell them to go in the light or anything like that. Like we were at Ashmore Estates down in Illinois, uh, one of the locations that Ghost Adventures been to and everything like that. And people recommend you not do seances. Well, we went there for more than 10 hours investigating from dusk till dawn Mm. and somebody we found out later that night from the caretaker somebody did a seance that really upset everything in here so if you're not getting anything and yes we didn't get anything the whole entire night maybe one EVP and that was it the most Mm. haunted asylum in Illinois 
and we didn't get anything. Mm. Uh, it's because, you know, somebody did a seance and they could have just interrupted everything, you know? Yeah. We don't, that's why we don't do that stuff. Because yeah. we, we don't want to either bring something bad in yeah. because we're not experienced to do a seance like that. And if you're not experienced, something serious can exactly, happen. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. You don't want that. Yeah, well, me and Jazz um, had something very similar to happen to us. Uh, we were doing um, a little thing for a radio broadcaster, and we went to a, a famous castle in Wales, and we were asking the seance. Now, obviously, you've got to think we've been doing this a lot longer, and you build up a relationship with the other side, and you build up trust, and if they push you to do something, Matt, in the future, I, I'd be very surprised if you don't actually go through with it. Yeah. And we were asked to help children because they were being harassed and kept prisoner by someone very evil. So the people in the group said, can you help these children? Because my name come up in a seance. And I said, let's go. And we did get in a bit of trouble. We were escorted off site by security. <laughs> I've never been chucked out anywhere in my life, my friend. I got chucked out of a castle. <laughs> <laughs> My blind yeah, ass got taped out. We were, we were escorted by security, and we had, I had a phone call then saying that the local council basically were going to sue. And I said to him, please do, because you will make us so famous. Because one, you'll have to prove the ghost is real. And the other two, and the other reason is because you're trying to create something we know as slavery. Yeah. You know? So... It, it, you will come across it. You will be prompted by spirit, and you will be tested. And you know, if you feel that something's morally right, and I just go with it. You don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to broadcast it. You don't have to yeah. tell anyone to stay. If you learn the technique, Matt, of helping spirit move on, which is basically right, this is it's, it's quite simple because we actually are ourselves doorways between worlds that's how we that's how we become sensitive i mean look at zach bagans to when he started ghost adventurers to him now he's 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 nigh on a medium you know he's that close because he's been in that energy for so long you know he's yeah, really absolutely. sensitive he's really sensitive to spirit you know he he really picks up on it and he listens and that's what would happen the more you're in that energy the more sensitive and mediumistic and psychic you become so it's just if you ever decide to help a spirit like that, you can do it on your own you don't have to broadcast it you can do it in your head that's all you just got to do is like to visualize the doorway and it happens so you don't have to ever wait if you're ever in that position and you feel like a bit morally um you know you know what I mean? Like you just said, you don't upset anyone. There's other people here that's paid to go. You can just do it in your own head. You don't have to. And it's a circle. preconception either as well. It's a, where people say about um, when you've got a place that's steeped in history, that place will have paranormal activity. Spirit, no. Um, spirit, no. That that place is kind of designated now for people to go and experience the paranormal. So they will come out anyway. Spirit who are not trapped there will come out and give people experiences and we've seen that happen before as well so honestly uh, it is something that you you know when it comes up for you just if you want us to teach you the just to teach you the the technique but i am more than happy to richard will be more than happy to it is your choice i'm not going to say you your night either way this is you know you you do it the way you want to but if, if if you want to learn that technique but i'm more than happy to show it to you Oh, absolutely! I do it appreciate is. that. Oh, well, when when uh, when we finish the show, look, I, I I'll uh, I'll go through it with you very briefly, and I think this will like this this guides us on to our next clip that I want to show of uh, yours, which is um in a home of someone that was very close to you. Uh, I, I I believe is that is, is that right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Should we should we show the clip? Yeah, let's show the clip. Let's do it. Dum dum. <laughs> dum dum. <laughs> 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 
Okay, uh, I played that through twice then for everyone at home. Um, that is a one hell of an EVP. Um, I've got a that is is that literally just coming through on the camera? Yeah. Uh, well, no. Um, that was on. That was a digital recorder, to be honest. I All right. That, that was. So uh, no. Um. Actually, Actually, that was on a cell phone. Oh. Wow. Yes, that was the voice post on a cell phone. Wow. So I know you. T I know you told us there was a bit of a. Well, it it it, it made me. It gave it was a bit of a heart wrenching story to that, Matt. Are you yeah. able to tell us the story of that on 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 air, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that clip that you guys just saw. Um, a good friend of ours, it's it, it just like night and day, he was doing fine. Saw him like three weeks prior to him going into the hospital and passing away. Um, uh, he, something happened, he was having surgery or something, can't remember, but he, uh, he was walking, he just collapsed and he passed away in the hospital. And, you know, his wife, it's like, you know, we we want to investigate the house, just see if he's in there. And I think this was either the first or second time we were in there. No, it was the first time we had the family in there and my wife was recording on her cell phone. She always does. She always has the memo recording through the whole investigation. So she can just listen to everything. We, then we can cut everything down. Yeah. And that appeared. So I put that on the computer hyped it up a little bit got the audio higher up because it was really low but you could hear it absolutely hear yeah, it yeah absolutely and i cleared that up and brought it higher up i didn't modify it in any way that clip you heard that's how it went but it was really low because it was it was like he was in the background maybe in, in the kitchen area and that's we heard I'm home and it's, it was just unbelievable when we heard that, like she teared up, I kind of teared up. I was like, yeah, that was, that was Richard. Yeah. And, um, we went back there. I remember and trying to get him and say, you know, we heard you, you're home. Are you, are you here? And that night we didn't get anything. It was just That's that night. And thing. I think it's, it's what was there. That's a, that's a powerful thing, that, isn't it? When somebody, you know, you're close to like that and you hear their voice and, you know, it's it's like us for mediums when we pass that message on and we see the, in the person's face that you know something, only they know. Yeah. And it's like you're in that voice that you recognise. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 when you told me the story earlier, Matt, it kind of like warm, you know, it, it went right to my heart. I said that's yeah. a that's a powerful thing, that isn't it? It is. It really is. And like I told you, uh, he was he loved the paranormal, and just knowing that now he's in that that other realm, and uh, I, I I knew it. I knew it that that night, like when we first went there, he was going to say something or do something, but just hearing his voice and knowing that was him, that was that touched me, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. It's... I know. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, guess you in the tummy, yeah, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Guess you like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can see little things like, uh, little things like that are what push you to go a little bit further, you know? And they kind of like, they, they give you that little bit. It's, there's a magic to the paranormal. I know we're going to, you know, it's easy to get stuck on an egg because we've been through the egg, and I know you're going to go through it when you do house cases, Matt. You will go through the egg because you know you've you've come across people who were so frightened in their own in their own home 
that they are like that energy is just manifested in when something incredible. But the paranormal, there's so much wonder and beauty and and hope and joy in it that you know, and that's that little thing, that little trip there, there's always something you're gonna look back on. And no, you know what I mean? That was priv you were privileged to that. That was a privileged yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it's personal. It's it's like yeah. it has meaning to other people, but it will not mean the same to what it means to you. And it's like the stuff I've had, and I've done videos dedicated to the stuff I've had with my own brother. Um, but it it's hard to explain it, but it's hard to explain what it actually makes you feel. It is, because there's so many different emotions and stuff surrounding it, but it just keeps you going. It keeps you sort of, it keeps you, what I find with a lot of people, they'll have, they'll capture something and they'll, they'll think about, well, what do we get the next one? And when you get something like that, like what you just described, it makes you just look at that one, the one that you've got for the, for that. You know, like you said, you didn't get much else that night, but you didn't really need much else that night because what you had was powerful enough. Do you know what? Oh, yes. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know, yes. uh, you could do a te you could do a thousand investigations and still not get anything that powerful. You know, yeah. <laughs> it is. And uh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely uh, brilliant. Sorry, Matt. Can I ask? Can I just have a question over your left? Is that a, is that a, um, like a trail camera, like um like an animal uh, camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh one of ours. Uh, we have another one that we use, but uh, these these don't really get used that often, unless we feel like we need to put them somewhere. Uh, but our uh, our command center cameras that we use on the big screen that that those get used a lot more than these. So, but um, believe it or not, we haven't caught anything on these yet. But uh, but there will be today a day that we will get yeah. some. Well, with them, the best thing to do with them type of cameras, genuinely, is hide them. Right, so you put stuff around them because that's what they do. They pick up motion, don't they? And so, and then exactly. just sort of like leave them. Don't put them on display on a table because you've seen, you know, you must have seen videos where spirit will interact with the camera. You know, there's some spirit oh. who, who know exactly what a camera is. You know, so with oh, something yeah. like that, you know, it's best to like sort of like put it somewhere sneaky and hide it. Okay. That's, you know, because we've had it quite a few times. You'll notice, like, have we, have we had quick, uh, equipment sort of drain all, all of a sudden, all at the same time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we have that a lot on any investigation. Yes. Yeah, that, that can be that can be quite a nuisance, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're, when you're recording and doing something for like the Facebook page or something like that and you're just holding your camera and then all of a sudden it's just like yeah it just died it was full battery and all that but good thing yeah. is the handy thing to have are like power packs and just plug them up to every electronic you are using right then and there except like your REM pods and K2s and I don't have those extra <laughs> yeah. cameras that's, that's how we can go for hours our power yeah. banks I, I have a paranormal my, my, my paranormal kit bag is like half full of spent batteries <laughs> yeah. that, that's the thing that's the thing you know you're a paranormal investigator you reach in your pocket for something different and you pull out batteries <laughs> that's very very true man it's very very true I mean, that's one thing when we're about to go on an investigation and I'm asking my wife, I'm like, how many batteries do we have? And she's like, I don't know if these are bad or not, because you just save them. And I was like, well, I... They're badges of honor! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're the same. 
we're like plugging them in going oh, oh god when you check it out yeah we're, we're the same honest <laughs> for, for paranormal investigators right you know we've we've given you a bit of tips and guidance and stuff right which you know take what you need and leave the rest right but honestly you're talking to the guys here right who go on so many paranormal investigations and forget to bring a bloody torch <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You honestly oh, yeah, talk about flashlights. I uh, you, you're teaching me some techniques and stuff like that. You pro- guys probably already know bright lights might be bad for the paranormal when you're investigating. So, like investigating locations using like either black lights to see, yeah, red lights, blue lights. We have fingertip lights that we put on our thumbs and just switch them on. And then that's where we can have the camera and actually just see where we're going. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, those work, like, super well. I, I can't explain how great they work. And with white lights, spirits tend to hide because they're seeing this bright light, and they're like, well, I'm not ready yet, you know? <laughs> so you, you're using, like, this red light. They, it, You're basically seeing in their dimension. So you could literally see a black shadow walk around and just be like, really? What was that? You know, with the white light, you're just looking, you know? Yeah. Hey, that's not, half, that's not half yeah. bad. I've never thought of that before. I, wow. I'm going to give that a try. Yeah. Yeah. You, you notice it. Uh, I've noticed, like, if you've just got the equipment on and you've just got the light of the equipment and you'll find that you'll cast, when you're filming, you'll find it, you know, in the videos on YouTube, the people are, are catching things off that light, you know, off like a reflection. If you're shining at all, you're never going to get a shine a torch in the face of a ghost. <laughs> you know, oh, you're yeah. You're never going to catch that image. <laughs> no. No. I just love the analogy. I've seen a bright light. I'm not ready yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's absolutely crap. Yeah, exactly. that's brilliant. If you were a spirit, you see a bright light, and you're like, "No, I'm good here." I'm just, I'm just the you know, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so that for a game of dominoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, brilliant. It's, 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 I tell you what, just in that, you, you see that, Matt. But there's so much to it. You know, it's little things like that that make the difference. Yeah. And there's so many little things and techniques and different. There's so much to this. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's an incredible thing. Yeah. You know, the stories, you, I, you know, the stories we've encountered over the years. You know, like you said, it's not just going to a house and this family's haunted by the old man that died in the chair. You know, there's so much more to the story that you'll uncover and it'll lead you here, and it'll take you there, and you'll find out that, that, like, maybe the family has a connection to this person and they didn't know about. You know, there's so much to it, you'll discover. It's incredible. The stories, that's the one thing that's fascinated me over the years about the paranormal, is how what you think is something simple can be huge. Yeah. And the story exactly. can even come back to me. I've had, we've had it on cases where it's come back to jazz or it's come back to me in some way. Yeah. You know, you found out that after you've had a connection that yeah. you didn't even realize. It's it's incredible. Exactly. Like I... the case that we were previously talked about where what we're doing now with the little boy. Now, their apartment used to be the old base housings um, because we have a base here in town that was the biggest base, bigger than the Pentagon now in the United States. It's called the Chinoo Air Force Base. If you look it up, you'll read all about it. But um, Travis and our camera guy uh, that we have, he's also been looking up stuff and all that. But Travis said this could like, literally be linked to the base, like this airman, something. If this is not a demonic case, this could be somebody that is an angry person um, and just could be targeting this little boy you know and it's the aspects of having somebody on hand i know this is probably something for you too learning the history of the place before you go my wife is a little skeptical on that because she doesn't want to know about a lot of the paranormal stuff because we all like to come in open-minded 
but learning about the place itself, wherever we go, um, if that has to be an Indian site that we're going on to that this house is sitting on or what i mean we're going to dig deep and that's what our historian and investigator travis kane does i mean he is phenomenal at doing that i i can't even find half of the stuff he finds mm. yeah sometimes it is a bit of a double-edged sword with the history um it can work both ways i mean we've done where we've, like, Jazzy might have researched it and not told me. I've gone in and see if what I see or what we pick up connects to what he's learnt. So if you have somebody in the team, it, it'd be worth an experiment, right? If you have somebody dedicated to, to research in the team, tell them to keep it to themselves. Print the information off so it's written. It can't be, be like, just changed or it's, it's not like Wikipedia. And then see what comes through the ghost boxes and the devices and the medium and see if it correlates with the actual history. And that can be that can be so much validation for yourselves that you're no, on the right steps. It can be, it can be brilliant. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. We did it at the hospital. I said I was picking up um if you remember, Jazz, the one we did up in Sri Herbert. And I yeah. said I could see a guy, he's dressed as a doctor, but he's not a doctor. And he's part, he was actually a patient in the hospital, and they had um, like a mental health wing, and he went off into the town pretending to be a doctor. And I was thinking in my head, I was thinking, no, this can't just, I, this is what I'm picking up, I'm passing it on. We were talking about it on camera, and then um, Hugh went and did research after. He was walking his dogs, and he met two people who were walking a dog, and they told him the story that I related to him. They said, oh, do you remember when that guy broke out dressed as a doctor, went around the village? You know, and I was like, you wouldn't have found that out. I don't think you could have found that out through historical records. And that's the other thing, is when you're doing these cases, information will come to you, and it'll come to you in the strangest ways. I don't mean like <clears throat> through like mediums or, or spirit people. You will do. Uh, you will have instances of like that where you're out with a dog and someone will just drop it in conversation. We had one with a, a flat. A, it's one of the only cases we couldn't solve, and it's because these flats were condemned. And we picked up this woman, and she was a horrible piece of work. And then Richard's driving with this uh, this this other this, this, this other gentleman you had with work, and basically he knew the area, and he had that kind of, it, he, he had that experience himself. Uh, it was related, the person was related to him and he related the story that we picked up. So that was quite, uh, you know, you will have that. I wanna go on to the next clip now, guys. Um, <clears throat> the clip that I've got here now is, um, it's it, it's an EVP you picked up, and I think it's your, your, your uh, Travis who's, who's uh, speaking in the background. So I'm gonna show this and then I'll come back. We'll come back to you in a second for a bit of a uh, uh, background on that. If that's okay with you, Matt, is that all right? Yes, absolutely. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, then. Oh. Hello. 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 Okay, so what was the background on that there, my friend? The background? Uh, if, if, if you can look in um, where you see the wall there right in front of you. Yeah. Now, on the left-hand side of that, that's actually Frederick Holman's cell. And uh, Travis was trying to communicate with Frederick. And... Uh, I don't, to be honest, we were talking about this since he, because that sounded like a woman, like a woman screaming. Yeah. And 
Uh, being that that was his jail cell, I, I don't know. I'm just on the fence of it. But he said something like, could that be interacting with him killing a woman or doing something to a woman? And that's playing right here. Because that's all that's all we caught in that audible and why it would be screaming because outside of that jailhouse you walk outside of that that unit in the building you walk into the living quarters you walk there's a stairs going upstairs with the bedroom an old school room and everything like that but then you got this room where it's like two stories of jail cells so i i don't know and i believe the door the big metal door to the jail cells from the living quarters were closed and he was in there by himself. So having that scream, I'm kind of thinking that could be possibly a, uh, a woman getting abused or something like that in the afterlife. Cause I mean, we've had stuff come through spirit box of spirits fighting back and forth. Like they would do in the present, you know, <clears throat> There's no outside, or there's no there's no way that it, like, uh, that could be anything physically outside the the the, the area no, where you're filming. No. no. No, it was it was the dead of night, and the windows had bars on them, and the windows really couldn't open that easily, and all of them were closed. Um, yeah. And there were limited windows in there. It was a jail. Yeah. So. Exactly. People will ask that, so that's, that's why I, I kind of asked that question. I, I, I could tell that had an ethereal quality to it. What's your take on it, Rich? Well, you can, obviously, you can get the plasma recording, right, which um, from from my, from over the years I've investigated, I've noticed it happens around, like, vibration. So if you get, like, a lorry going past and it vibrates the building just uh, only a fraction and then it has to be you you might not even pick it up and that sometimes can replay like a residual sort of sound this sort of like if you imagine you know with the plasma being recorded in stone that can happen in in some occasions it depends on the context of if you're asking for something and it happens and it depends, like I said, on the location as well. If the location has history of that kind of thing, then, you know, you've got to sort of, like, weigh it up against the balance of the place you're in. So if there's, if there was female staff that might have been attacked there, if there was females in that location, if that was possible, you know, if, if that scenario was possible, then you, you, you tend to be drawn to more the fact that that is a spirit in their last moment, you know, of a scream, you know, but there's so, there's so many factors you have to take in, but I've listened to it and it is quite, you know, it's, it's quite the chilling sort of sound, you know, it would cause yeah. you, it, it is chilling. It's like somebody is sort of screaming because they are terrified, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, well what you said, yeah, it, it, it could be replaying to many different things. It couldn't be like it probably isn't Frederick, but on these cells that are on the right hand side that it goes all the way back, um, who stayed there was a uh, child molester. So, I mean, you got so many yeah, factors going around. It doesn't necessarily have to be a woman, it could be a male yeah. squeak. You know, you, you, you have, male. you know, yeah, you, you have, fe you know, you have feminine sounding males. It could be a male scream, you know. Yeah. Really, it, it doesn't say. It, it doesn't sound like it can have a title to it. To be honest, it's a scream. Mm. So, what if that scream? It could be Frederick getting hung. That was his mm. last hurrah. You know, ah, boom. He just and it's yeah. coming through all of those barriers till it hits ours. Yeah. So mm. it could have yeah. sounded different replaying in the other world to coming down over here and then it's just stretched basically it's yeah, like going it's... through a warm a wormhole you know you're yeah. getting stretched and come back you know yeah so you you will find if you find if you come across if you if you go to a location and you come across a portal 
and you will be surprised at the, the variance of activity where one of these sort of doorways is located. You know, you'll get sort of things that don't match the surrounding area. So you might be in a male prison that's quite isolated, and all of a sudden you'll get children or you'll get females. You know, and you and you think, well, what they, what have they got to do with the area? Depends. It's because on it's what... and spirits can travel. Yeah, spirits can, can travel. They, you know, you get visitation. You get like um, people who are stuck to the area because of something that's happened in that specific area. You know, there's so many, there's so much that you have to think about and go through and for the answer. It's it's incredible. It's right. It's you know. It's right. These you know. You see these people who, and I see lots of them, and it is quite annoying. And they and they just go for, they get the lights to flash, and they they sort of treat that person like a performing monkey, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I that I gotta be honest riles me, right? That's a that's a living. You wouldn't say that to a person. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't say that to a physical person. You wouldn't say, "Do that again, do that again, do that again, keep doing it." You know, and then do nothing about it. Not find out who they are, what's their story, do they need help, what have they been through, do they have a message, you know? And they just get the lights to flash, and then they move on to the next. And that, I gotta be honest, I well, I've said it over the years on on our own channel, but it, it riles me, it upsets, it upsets me, you know. It's just, that person has, has defied physics and the boundaries of the world we live in and the rules, gone through all that to get you a message. At least, at least you could do is be a bit appreciative about it, and you know, and and and, and go to a bit of lengths to make sure that that voice is heard. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And that's how we are. We're polite when, when somebody's communicating with us. If that has to be a REM pod or what, you know, even too, when it comes to a spirit box, we're not like, okay, keep going. There you go. You're doing awesome. You know, we're like, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You Gratitude. Know? Gratitude, man. You, yeah. You can, it, it's light coming through. We always say, you know, okay, try a little bit harder. Let it, let us hear you more because we can't understand you. Come on, keep trying. You know, it's like if somebody's like dying or something, you know, you, you just want to like get that last breath out. Come on, you can do it. It's okay. You know, or somebody's scared, you know, because you, yeah, you don't know how they're <laughs> feeling, you know, yeah. in the afterlife. You don't know if they're confused. Yeah. You don't know what they've been through, their mental state. You don't know if Absolutely. they, you know. Yeah, you, you're, you, you're on, i got to be honest, Matt, you're on the right tracks, but you're on the right tracks. You, 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 everything you said, I was a bit, a little bit, i tell you the truth, and I didn't say this to Jazzy, I was a little bit sceptical about tonight, and I was thinking, oh, you know, I hope you're not going to be one of these, this, like, I'm this and I'm that, because you get that in the paranormal field, where you get the know-it-alls, yeah. right? Yeah. And been the complete yeah. opposite, Matt. You've yeah, been absolutely, genuinely, man. Yeah, you. I gotta be honest. You you completely changed my mind. I didn't think it was gonna go like this, and you're on the right path, my friend. You are really are on the right path. I, I, and, uh, and we will put a word in for spirit. And if you're ever in need, and you're doing a case, and you're a bit concerned, or you 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 know you are you know you want advice. And if like me and Jazzy always say, if we don't know it, I'm sure we know someone that does. Yeah. Ex definitely, right. definitely, man. So if you're ever stuck, man, you just let us know. I want to go into. You know what? Go on, sorry, go on, go on, Matt. Oh, sorry, I was about to say. You know what? I uh, never know. We might venture up to the uh, to the wells. You know, we might we might go up to UK, and uh, you would be very well. Oh, we'd be yeah. very welcome, my friend. You would be very welcome. We will. Uh, we'll, we 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 we'd take you on a few places, and uh, you know. Richard, are you still with us? Because they, you seem to have frozen on a really weird place, and all I can see is you laughing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's smiling. That's that's it. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I think we've lost him. I got it. Um, 
I think we have actually lost Richard. Uh, uh, Richard, <laughs> if you want to come back on, um, you need. <laughs> Can you speak to us? You want to use the spear? <laughs> Uh, I think he's actually, uh, yeah, he, we've actually lost, uh, we've actually lost Richard here. Um, I don't know how to get him back on. If you bear with me a second, uh, uh, Richard, Richard, where are you? I'm hoping, ah, uh, yeah, we have actually lost him. Uh, just bear with me a second. He, he probably find his tablet has gone. What we'll do is, um, I just want to, I just want to say uh, to people on the chat, whilst we see if we can get Richard back on here, um, a lot of people on the chat are feeling that, that there's, there's, there's a rise in spiritual energy, a rise in spiritual activity. And, um, you know, a, a, a lot of people are actually feeling that. And uh, I've been reading some of your chat comments as we're going through this at the moment. So a lot of other people on the chat as they're watching, they, 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 are, they are feeling a lot of like sort of uh, shifts in energy and are having like discussions, whether it's due to the lockdowns or due to the, the COVID-19, but also they feel like it's there may be something a bit more greater to it. Um what I will do, should we play the next clip whilst we wait for Richard to come back on, on board? What do you reckon, Matt? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, well, uh, I'm just going to just tell Richard to rejoin the call. Because uh, otherwise he's going to be stuck. And I know what he's like with his tech. So we're going to go on to the next, the next bit. This is um, an EVP which uh, you recorded on a digital recorder. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this in a second. We just caught something on the camera. Yeah? There was like a little tiny dot mapped in, it, like a blue orb kind of thing, like floating around the corner of the screen and then it blew off. Well, we started talking about music. The EMF went over a thousand. When you were talking about music? Yes. Is it fully it charged? It died. It, it went over a thousand and it died? Yes, I have it on camera. Wow. Yeah. We're getting some great energy. Is there a little girl in here with me? Can you let me know your name? If there is? Hey, did you just whisper? No. Did you hear a whisper? I heard a whisper. We're going to end this. I hope you talk to me. If, if, you, ever, if, you, if you do come down to the UK, give us a buzz and we'll have a meet up and we'll, we'll show you around. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, I don't know uh, when that would be though, with everything going on. Oh, I know. I <laughs> yeah. No, I know it well. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of them things at the moment. The world, you know, and you'll find this through the paranormal that there's such a connection between our spiritual selves and what's going on in the world right now. And I think. Yeah. I think the two will catch up. I think people will start to see it. I think, you know, good people who, who abide by the law and stick to the rules will see that those that don't are not are not fighting for them. They're fighting just because they want to fight. They're not fighting for a specific reason or they're not burning things or destroying things or causing problems all the greater good they're just doing it because they can and i think once people start to balance that out things will you know they, they'll change i think yeah i think you know. yeah i agree um so that that clip then that, that that audio clip that you shared with us my friend that's a very clear evp there 
Is that is that? Oh yeah. W- w- is that in the prison as well, or is that somewhere else? No, uh, that was in St. Joe uh, location in Illinois, in the U.S. Uh, it was a Boy Scout post building, very small basement, and the upstairs, and that was it. Uh, this was caught upstairs. Uh, there were accounts of a young girl uh, who passed away behind the building on the train tracks. Um, got hit by a train, passed away due to that. And uh, that was, we were just recording, and uh, I tried to communicate with her. And sure enough, she did come through. She said hi. Uh, a lot of people here help me, but. Like, when I replay it and hear it, after they say, help me, I hear it. But when I hear it, I mean, it's just, I don't, I can't hear the hear me or uh, help me. But everybody says it's help me. So we're just going to go with help me on that. Okay. Um, I'm going to sh- gonna quickly, because we were running short on time, I want to quickly grab, uh, there's another one there where, where you have... A couple of spirit box responses. So there's two spirit box um, clips that I want. And, and what are, are they both in the same location? You've got the one with the Ouija board and the one with the three women. Are they in the same location or are they different locations? Uh, different locations. This is a haunted hotel, um, completely abandoned. Um, and this was, yeah, this was the first time us coming up there, and we actually had some people come up to experience and we let these two girls in um, who follow us and everything and just let them experience for a couple hours and that's what we did in this one room and what about the other one with uh, um, it, 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 some people heard Satan other people heard Stephen what was uh, what was that one what case was that uh, that was a location called the Roth House in Watsika, Illinois. It's, um, it was about a case that there was like a hundred year possession of a woman and uh, we decided to investigate it. We set up and everything just to talk to Mary Roth and we decided to do that on the Ouija board up in the room. Uh, that Ouija board was actually found up in the attic uh, from the 90s. Hmm. So, he doesn't know why it was up there or what, but when the guy bought the house, he went up in the attic and he found that and he put it down in the stir bedroom. Ooh, found Ouija board. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, should I show these two clips and we can discuss them a bit more then a little bit after after we after we've watched them, is it? So if I if I play yeah, these two yeah. clips now, and then we'll go from there. Yes, absolutely. We got two people in here that want to experience the paranormal with us just for a little while. We got two people in here that want to experience the paranormal with us just for a little while. So they're doing the spirit box. Make yourselves known. Touch one of them. Move or no? I heard move. Did you pull on her shirt? (laughs) 
to stay here, yes or no? <laughs> Let us know. Move something in here. Knock on a door. Knock on something. Maybe tap one of us instead of push one of us. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah, you want to hold the camera with That's okay. That's okay if you can't. Not, not bad, not bad. How many of you are here? Five. 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 That was clear five. Wow, five. I had to bring that up on, I hope we got that, I hope we got the audio on that second clip, if not we'll have to show it again on a, on a separate video. Um, so Matt, uh, I can, I, it's weird because I, I can hear both when I'm listening to that Owen, I can hear, I can actually hear Satan the second time mm -hmm. and then I could hear Stephen so it's quite, it's quite interesting there. What sort of results do you get with ITC? With you know, what's your thoughts on on things like spirit boxes and spirit box apps and that sort of thing? Uh, the apps, uh, I'm skeptical on the apps, like the Necro app that a lot of people use. Um, I, I'm a little skeptical. It's it's because um, yeah, it's a lot of these paranormal apps have gotten bad raps um, from reviewers and stuff like that and people use them because they're they're skeptic they download it just to be disproved you know mm -hmm. um so we haven't dabbled a lot in those apps uh alan our tech guy investigator does have on his phone we haven't used it yet but uh necro uh phonic app or whatever it's called we do have that but we've never used it we have better options using the uh, ITC uh, spirit box because yeah. with that like I said spirits can draw energy into it for them to be able to talk and with that you can actually hear and determine male or female child you know we've gotten all those we've gotten kids we've gotten um, men women demonic we've gotten evil voices coming through absolutely 
Um, we've, we've had screams come through that didn't sound human, you know? So I believe that works a lot better than using something that has a word database in it. Uh, but don't get me wrong. I do love using Oculus stuff, Oculus and stuff like that, you know, uh, but we don't use it often because we get our best evidence off that. I would say if you can get Windows based apps, the two is Afterlife Box, which is a free one, and the S- okay. the Half Paranormal SCD2. You need an internet connection for that because the SCD2 works exactly the same as a Spirit Box, but it uses internet radio rather than using FM radio, right? And the stuff we've had off that has been amazing, isn't it, Rich? Are you still there with us, Rich? Yeah, yeah, I'm still, yeah, it has, it is, it is, it has been amazing, I mean, genuinely been, it's been more than amazing, it's a bit, um, oh, overwhelming, it's a funny, yes, yes, it's so, it's been almost a little bit too good for, really, sort oh, of, yeah, definitely, it, sir. yeah, yeah, for sort of for is for two way communication with spirit, and to get the answers we've received, and to get the validation in the things that's happened to us at separate intervals to when we've had the message. Yeah, I, as an investigator, I got to be honest, some of it has been incredible. It's a little bit on the borders of a little bit too much sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but a brilliant device if you're gonna you if you're gonna use and start in that sort of realm, it's it. I would say it's up there w- yeah. with the best of the best. The phone well, apps again, the ones on the phones on Android. I have had some good results with Porto, but I've also had some bad results with Porto. Uh, I haven't used the like the Necrophonic. Uh, I do want to use Dead Wave. I've not, I've not tried it yet, but I do want to use Dead Wave. But the Windows, I heard that's the new one. Yeah, I've the Windows apps, Afterlife Box, and the SCD two. I would swear by they, they have. There's a video on our channel where my brother comes through and talks about dreams, and he gives a breakdown of what happens when spirit appear in our dreams. Um, I'll send you. I'll send you some videos over after the show, and you can have a look at them. And, Love to see them. And um, what I find with ITC is the stronger your connection with spirit, people just think it's the app. All the spirit need to communicate. All the spirit need is an audio source. There's another video we mm-hmm. did where all we had was two microphones, and we weren't even trying to communicate with spirit. We were trying to do a live stream. Back in 2013, uh, this I'd only known Richard about two months at this point. My myself and my my other half were working as mediums, and we had a page where we had like a couple. Uh, we had about seventeen thousand fans, and I ended up shutting it down um, for for a lot of reasons. But we were trying to do a live stream. Now back then in 2013, doing a live stream was quite difficult because. Um, you literally, you know, didn't have the ease of setup that you do now. And we had um, two mics. The the microphone I'm using now, which is my, my snowball mic, and the mic on the laptop was kind of accidentally left on. And it was manipulating our voices, because they were coming back as an echo, and they gave us responses just through that. So Spirit, what they, oh, tend wow. to, what they need is an audio source. But what people tend to forget is our connection with them. That's the big thing. That's what they use. It's us. We there's a human component to it, and it's like, because I've, for the first four years of being an investigator, from like twenty fourteen to twenty eighteen, say right, we used to have several messages, and we never really went over them until about twenty seventeen, when we started to investigate them in in depth, and we did several experiments. And what we found was, when we went back over them, the, mostly through the SB7 and then on to the other apps as we progressed, 
we were getting messages for both myself and Richard and other members of the team as well. It wasn't just us two, but it was primarily aimed at us two. Yeah. And it was it was messages that, that, that were for us like you would get in the reading. And it was because we... The way we... It's because we came from that mediumship background, I guess. Do you know what I mean? So I kind yeah. of... I built that connection with Spirit Up without even realising it and didn't realise that that was the kind of component. So you'll find that as you as you progress and you start investigating, especially if you're doing house cases, you'll find you build a relationship with Spirit and that relationship will enhance the evidence you capture because they know mm -hmm. that you'll do the right things with it. You're not going to misrepresent it. You're not going to abuse it then if that makes sense yeah it is but yeah um that's still very clear responses for what you had there they were brilliant they were direct and they were fantastic responses rich do you have any comments before we go on to the final video um no it's just yeah i like evps right if you got you know your, your bog standard dictaphone there's there is nothing quite like a response through a device like that, right? No, there's not. There, there, there is something quite. I've always found that when I first started using, um, like dictaphones and stuff like that, I, I found them responses always give me a little bit of the EBGBs because we had clear voices, you know, direct to our questions, and I always found that evidence that you couldn't, you could show it to the best of the best, and they couldn't take it apart. Um, but yeah, it is worth it is worth getting into the ITC stuff as an investigator because sometimes Matt, you can get you can get a lot more than you realise, and they can say a lot more than they can because you imagine. I think it takes a different level of energy to speak with the actual voice because you know, as you know, it's not air passing larynx. They're using energy to, to, to create the word. So it takes a lot of concentration for spirit to physically make their voice heard through a, through a dictaphone or recording equipment. But with the ITC stuff, I think you can get a bit more of an in-depth conversation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. And, yeah, we have. Yeah. And it's... The evidence shows, man. Yeah. The oh, yeah. You've got to show it, like, you know... Absolutely, absolutely. Like that video, like all those two girls in the video, uh, besides my wife who was in there um, conducting the whole spirit box session, they had no idea on if this really worked or not because, yeah, they were big fans of, you know, Ghost Adventures. Who is it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> You got, you got to be like, wow, that is really cool, but that I don't know if that's real. Well, come with us, and we'll we'll show you. And yeah, they had a full yeah. conversation with spirits, yeah. and they were just hey, mm. yeah. I'll change your world for you, bud. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah. I'll change your world for you. Uh, <coughs> oh yeah. We're gonna go on to the final clip. Uh, this is you, you take it in a bedroom. Um, it, it, this is the house case, is it? Is it Matt? The one, one in the bedroom. Is that the one with the REM pod? Yeah. Uh, no, that was actually at a case that we uh, tagged along with uh, with another paranormal team. Uh, this was actually at a hotel, and this was a functioning hotel. We had people in the background swimming in the pool and everything like that. This was a room that they asked us to come because they can't rent this out to anybody because they had experiences in this place. So, so we went. You still with us? I'm still with you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Sound like a freight train going past you then. Oh, I know. I it went past twice while this was going off, and I, I <laughs> before this interview, I was just like, I hope the train just can just stop for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them went past, so I'm just like, yeah, kudos. 
Right, let's play this clip. Did you suffer? You haven't found the light yet, Amy? Amy, can you walk away from that, please? Walk a little more away from it, please. It's going kind of crazy. Can you walk away from it, please, Amy? Step away from the box, Amy. Thank you. I want you to focus on one thing on this bed here. It's this device right here. Can you come over here and touch my hand, please? Amy, can you come over here next to me? I'll know you're next to me. This will light up and let me know. Use the energy in this room. It is really sad what happened to you. You didn't want to go, did you? Let me know. Make this go off for yes. Did you want to go so early in life? Amy? I don't want that to go off. Can you walk away from it, please? Walk away from it. How about we come over here? Follow me. Amy, shut that off. Shut it off right now. Walk away. Amy, I'm not mad. Just walk away. Make it go quiet. Thank you. And we're back. And we're back. So that was, uh, uh, so that was a hotel. That was a hotel. Fully <laughs> active hotel. Did you ever not get... Not only spirit, other people. <laughs> so did you get any... Uh, did, did you did you resolve the case? Or did you find out what was happening? Uh, we knew what was happening. They wanted us to come in to investigate it just to see if the people... We're really believing that, yes, this place is haunted. They can't do anything about it, nor do we want to. Um, they did tell us that uh, they didn't want really to let her go because it was the woman, Amy. She was, uh, I believe that case, she died of a overdose of some sort uh, in the hotel, in that room. Uh, but no, she's a really friendly spirit. She doesn't mean harm to anything, but 
they wanted us to come because a lot of the people that stayed in that room had experiences and they they were like, yeah, you, you guys need to have somebody come in here and figure what this is. But we knew who it was. Brilliant, brilliant. Someone on the on the chat. I just want to make uh, make this comment. To someone, I've just been reading the chat as we as we go into this, guys. Um, it is quite small text because I'm checking the chat on my phone as uh, I haven't found a way to sort of cite between Skype and our broadcast software. You know us; we do it in the kind of gorilla kind of way, unfortunately. But um, one of you came up with an idea on the chat for a now debate that you would like us to do. So if you could let us know on the chat what that idea was and we'll see what we can do about it i also just want to make uh, uh an appeal for anyone who knows about uh psychedelics because i know we got asked about that a couple of weeks ago and that is still something we're looking into um when it comes up and we got the right person we will bring them on board matt um it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this evening and you know uh, we want to sort of bring this now into the sort of closing stretch as it's been a good hour and a half here um, what sort of it, it, do you have any parting thoughts or things you would like to say to people watching um, that sort of thing or, or anything that you want to give advice maybe for people who are experiencing activity maybe in your area or is there any sort of I want to give you the floor for a second and, and, and sort of anything that you might want to say yeah if anybody's experiencing the paranormal um, you can tackle it on your own but I would not recommend doing that because that can go in any way so uh, whoever wherever you are there's websites to find paranormal investigators that can help with the situation you're going through and like myself and my team those investigators would be happy to help you and would help you to the fullest extent and do it to the fullest extent so we're out here we're all out here people like my team we're out here so all you have to do is just look if you can't if you don't know what to do we're not far behind Richard, do you have any clo uh, closing questions, my friend? Richard, are you still with us? I think... Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry, you know I'm back now. Right, do you um, have... Yeah, I'd just like to say... Yeah, I'd just like to say... Um, you've... Um, you're going to be all right, Matt. You're going to do well, and you will... You're going to learn some interesting stuff about the paranormal and just yeah, stay yeah. on this path and you will be all right. And I, I, I've had a couple of conversations with paranormal people over the last couple of days and it's been nice. It's been refreshing. It's been nice to see that people are, are doing it right and, and, and sticking to the right path and, and doing it because they care. And that's a big deal in this field. It's just having someone to listen to you because, you know, they, there's so much ridicule in regards to this field. Even though you've got the shows on telly, when it's in the real sense, you, you people can be really afraid to speak about it and, tell, and say what they're going on. And it's people like yourself, Matt, will give them the courage and, you know, and having that understanding, will, you will help people. You really will. But you'd be yeah. surprised how much you actually help people. It's going to be, you know, and yeah, well done to you, bud. i got to be honest, well done to you. You've, um, Thank you. Yes. Just been, you just keep on tracking with it. You just keep on doing it. And like, you, you know, you know, you know us now. And if we have, if we, yeah. if we have any advice and you come across something and you're not sure, me and Jazzy would be more than willing to give you advice or help or whatever we oh. can do. Oh, yes, I'm definitely going to stay in touch with you. And like you were saying, you know, what we're doing there's people out here that can help but another thing is it's not a hobby anymore no, it's more no. of a lifestyle yeah it's, a life. it's not it is, no, but... it is it is not a hobby if you come into this and you treat it like a hobby you're gonna have a rude awakening you are going yes. to find yourself in in a place that you're gonna find it hard to find help because like in wales where we are it's not like this well it's i don't think there's any people that take the time 
to do it like we do it and to take the time yeah. to get to know you and reassure you and go through that process with you and you know I think it's going to be probably the same way you are Matt and you're going to find you know just being like I said just being that that just there to listen and, and to believe in what these people are going through is such a big thing it's such a big thing but you'll never understand you want it, it, it sometimes you know in 2016 me and Jazzy we did a couple of hundred cases in one year some nights we were doing two a night right mm. because there was a paranormal sort of might be a slight exaggeration but a couple of hundred <laughs> It was, it was, it was, it was hectic. It was, it was ridiculous. But it was a couple of well, hundred. about in 2016, if you remember, Jazzy. Yeah, um, we were, we were. Yeah, to be fair, we were up most it's of the quite, year. Yeah, we did well. as two cases a night. It tells you something, yeah. right? And um, there was a lot. There was a big spate of paranormal stuff going on in that year, and I had three people actually say thank you, right? I, like, I didn't charge completely free and I'd gone back and forth the cases it wasn't just one visit and you leave and that's how it's done you know I'd go back and forth like five or six yeah. times same, the yeah. same property and um, you know you, it, 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 it takes up a lot of your life and I had three people it say does. actually three people say thank you but it's what you get out of it can be yes. yeah it can be more do you know what I mean it can be more rewarding I, I do totally understand what you mean. Uh, we've had people say thank you to us, and to hear that, it's yeah. yeah I don't know. It's just it's it's more, and it feels good. It feels good, yeah. like you know, we've we've done a lot of things media wise, like going to horror conventions and being a part of that, having our own booth, but. That's also cool too because you can interact with the people that have problems, and you're like, "Well, let us know." We like to get out. That's that's the main thing because a lot of these paranormal groups, nobody knows about them. And with GhostNet, we want everybody to know about us. Um, that's why I, you don't know. I don't know um, if it was mentioned to you yet, Richard, but we had an offer for a TV show, and it was through Lionsgate who does all the Discovery Channel stuff, all the Travel Channel stuff, um, who co-produces Ghost Adventures and stuff like that. And we were we thought that was the coolest thing. We were halfway through it, and we were getting everything set up. We're about to start filming at locations, and we declined everything. Um, was that bad on our part? Could be. But it wasn't, because we built up what we are and we didn't want to be subjugated to a TV show and that's all you know us as you know yeah absolutely you will you, you will if you if you go into that you know anything to do with the media or anything to do with our world right you will get to the point I was, you know got a good example most haunted um, their medium Derek Acora he's and passed now Derek Acora he's passed now love him and he was a superb, and I mean, I know people who went for personal messages from Derek, and he was a superb medium, and he was a genuinely lovely man, but he got lost in that TV show, and the money, yes. and, and he was asked, and he was asked to embellish things and ham things up, you know, and it's very difficult when it comes to being, when it comes to things like money, not to do it. And if you do that, you lose your integrity. You, you you could work for years and years and years, and in that one moment, if you do something and it's caught out, and it's happened to a lot of people who have been on telly, you know, they've been caught kicking cupboards and banging things and throwing things and different things. Yes. And you've lost it. You've lost your credibility as to be ever taken seriously again. And the, you Absolutely. Know, yeah. You know, just that's that's true to the T. Um, talking with people that are on TV, like Zach Bagans, we <coughs> investigated locations that they stepped in and investigated. We asked, like, so how was that? We want to really know. And everything out of people's mouth, like, oh, he's a playboy. He's a prissy boy. You know, it's all about camera for him. You know, 
And I, it's sad to hear that because when he first started out, I loved, that's what got me hooked on them was the documentary mm -hmm. and seeing that, like, like he, he was normal. He was just a filmmaker, you know, yeah. and you got these shows out here like destination fear with Dakota Lagan, you know, um, I like what they do because they show the fear of everything, you know? Yeah. You, you have to have that sense of fear when you're going into something like that. Yeah. You, otherwise you lose know. respect for it. You lose, if you don't have a sense of fear, you lose respect for it. And well, I gotta, I gotta be honest, right? With, I'd say for old Zach, right? Cause I still love the guy. I absolutely yes. love that man. Right. Him, Aaron, yes. all of them. Right. Um, and you know the, the I can't think of their names right now. The other two that work with him, their names escape me because you get so used to saying Aaron and 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 Zach. Um, but with Aaron, he does. You can't say he doesn't love himself, right? He loves being on camera. Oh, yeah. He loves his own voice. Oh. But he's a showman. Oh, yeah. You know, he's built. He's yeah. built that character up, and he makes yes. that show. So, yeah, he, and he makes that show through his character. And I, I got to give him his dues for it because he has done so much for the paranormal field in making it aware and the equipment that him and his, you know, Tally built and everything else. I will never, I will always tip my hat to him. Always. I got to be honest with Zach. I will always tip my hat to him for everything he's done for this field and the effort he put in and, and making the paranormal, for, you know, accessible for everyone. Yes. Yes. It, opening up the minds of everybody that yeah like us you know yeah i've got to give him his dues because i i do like that i'd like to meet zach if there was anybody in uh, that field i'd like to meet i'd love to meet zach i would like to meet zach as well all the guys to be honest yeah aaron oh yeah he, he cracks aaron cracks me zach did put on you him. know <laughs> aaron's like the batman of the paranormal when he suits up he has that that utility vest and everything and but once something <laughs> scares him I'm, he's jumping running and yeah. he it yeah zach's zach zach but aaron makes the show for me i'm i'll be honest yeah. and but now billy's making the show with with that last episode with him screaming i literally thought that was a woman but that was billy i mean that was uh, they're all starting to become like what spotlight is supposed to be like you know yeah. but they they still tr stay true i i enjoy more of the episodes that they investigate homes because you see a different side of zach and everybody on yeah. the team that they care about the person and how they are feeling in this situation yeah exactly you nailed it yeah well if you want to stay on the line um uh for a second matt and we'll have a quick chat after uh, after this this goes i won't keep you for much longer but for everyone else watching thank you very much for tuning in tomorrow we have uh jesse ann uh you might remember her from about uh a month ago where she um talked about her code connections and did an amazing uh analysis on what's happening uh, at the moment this year and uh, give Richard a bit of insight as well which is <laughs> a bit a bit personal um, but uh, Anne will be joining us tomorrow at 8 o'clock for uh, a now debate if you guys want to tune into that and, and get some insight into what's happening um, for the rest of this year she is absolutely amazing Matt it has been absolutely brilliant thank you for coming on the show I'd love to have you back we'd love to have you back on at some point in the future if you ever need somewhere you know to... what? go on oh I, I said you know what you can actually have the whole team on we would love to do this all together yeah man well, if you've got yeah, if you, cool. you know if you want a platform the idea of these shows now is to give people a platform to showcase their evidence as I said, we'll be breaking them down into smaller videos as well so people can look at the different points that we've made doing this in bite-sized chunks because we've covered such a big ground as long as you're happy for us to do that. Um, and obviously that will help you, hopefully, as well. But thank you very much yep. for coming on the show. And, uh, guys, thank you ever, ever so much. Matt, if you stay on the line. Guys, Richard, any further no uh Because I, I always no. forget to ask you. Any further Hello, notes? Love and light, love and light to all my para peeps, and thanks for being on the chat. Thanks for watching the show. 
go and subscribe to Ghost Net Paranormal with Matt and his team. Go and give them a look because they're doing the right thing. Yeah. And they are, you know, you, you listen to them on this show, they're doing the right thing. They're on the right path and they're doing it properly. You've got to give them your attention. Their YouTube, uh, Facebook and Instagram links are in the description below. And any further videos we do featuring Matt will have their... Uh, all their stuff on our uh, in in the description. Uh, we aim to use this to help promote people who are doing things right, got good things to say, and 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 are out to help others. So thank you very much, Matt. Thank you all, guys, for watching. I've been Jared Walters. I've been Richard Oliver. And you take care now. <laughs>